Happy midnight, everybody, and welcome to Professor Moonshine's Redstone 101. And uh, it's been a hot minute since I uploaded a video in this series, and I'm terribly sorry about that. I've just had my focus on other projects, but I'm happy to announce that I am now resuming this series, and I will be posting a couple more episodes before we bring the 101 class to a close. Don't worry, though. This is not where the learning will end. I plan on starting a Redstone 105 course, which will transition from talking about singular redstone components to redstone circuits. But for now, we need to finish out learning about the components. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the target block, which is the subject of today's episode. This right here is the target block. It has a variety of very useful functions that we're going to go over. The first of which is that the target block is the only solid block that naturally redirects redstone dust into itself. So you can see that the target block just automatically connects with this redstone line, and when this happens, the target block becomes soft powered. You could compare this with any other block such as stone, and you can see the redstone dust does not automatically attach to the stone the way it does to the target block. Now, why is this useful? Basically, this function allows us to have a block that draws in a redstone signal simply from being adjacent to a redstone line. So let's say we put a piston here. If we now flick this lever to turn on the redstone line, you can see that the piston also becomes powered. This is because the target block is drawing in the power from the redstone line, itself becoming a soft powered block, meaning that all attached components also become powered. This is incredibly useful when designing compact redstone machines where you need to direct a signal into a block, but you don't have much space to do so. The target block allows a redstone signal to take a hard left or hard right turn without you needing an extra block for a repeater or another redstone dust. Now let's move on to the next function of the target block, which is as an actual target. When a target block is hit by a projectile, it emits a redstone signal. And the strength of that redstone signal is directly proportional to how close the projectile hit the center. So you can see if we hit the target block on the very outside, it emits a very low redstone signal. Whereas if we hit the target closer to the center, it's going to emit a stronger redstone signal. So the closer the projectile hits towards the bullseye, the stronger the redstone signal output. Now crossbow projectiles are far from the only projectile that will activate a target block. There's actually so many. For example, a trident will do the trick. So will a regular shot from a bow. As will a snowball. A splash potion. And even projectiles fired from dispensers like firework rockets or fire charges, both of these will also activate the target block. Now, as I'm sure you guys are noticing, when a target block is hit, it emits a redstone signal in the form of a pulse rather than staying on, which is just to say that the signal that comes from hitting a target block doesn't stick around forever. It's only on for a short period of time, which basically means that the target block turns on for a little bit and then turns back off. And quick fun fact is that different projectiles actually activate a target block for longer or shorter. So for example, the shot from a bow activates a target block for longer compared with a snowball, which is a very quick pulse. Now the last cool feature of the target block is that it becoming activated is considered a block update, which means that it's something that an observer can detect. So we can illustrate this by having an observer look at the target block and output a signal into a redstone lamp. And now if we shoot the target block, you can see that the observer detects the target block being shot. Now you may have noticed that the observer powered the lamp two distinct times. Now why is that? Recall that when the target block is hit, it goes from being unpowered to being powered for a short time, and then back to being unpowered again. And basically, the observer considers that to be two distinct events. The observer sees the target block going from being unpowered to powered and emits a signal, and then it sees the target block again going from being powered back to unpowered and emits a second signal. So basically, the observer is going to send one signal when the target block is activated and once again when it becomes deactivated. And we can see that in action once again. There's the first and there's the second. And that's all I have to teach you guys about target blocks. It's a pretty simple component, but let's go ahead and review what we learned. The first primary function of the target block is in redirecting redstone dust lines into itself and becoming powered. The target block is the only block that can do this, and it's very useful when you need redstone to be redirected in tight spaces. The second main use of the target block is that it outputs a signal strength when it gets hit by a projectile. And those projectiles can include tridents, bow shots, potions, ender pearls, basically anything that is thrown or shot will activate a target block. The signal strength of the output is directly proportional to how close you are to hitting the bullseye. So the farther on the outside of the block you are, the weaker the signal strength, and the closer you are to the bullseye, the stronger the signal strength. 
When the target block is activated by a projectile, it gives its output for only a short period of time. And lastly, an observer can detect block changes in the target block, so it will detect when a target block is activated, but also when the target block then becomes deactivated at the end of the short pulse. And that's pretty much everything about the target block, so let's go ahead and take a short quiz. All right, let's take a look at problem number one. Imagine that these mangrove walls are the walls of your base, and in between them you have to do some very tight and compact redstone. You need to make it so that when you flick this lever, these turn on. If we were to use target blocks, what's one way that we could accomplish this? I'll give you guys a minute to look at the circuit and think about your answer, and feel free to pause the video if you need more time. Got your answer? Awesome! Well, I'll show you how I would have done it. I would have put target blocks underneath each of these redstone lamps. The target blocks will automatically attach to the redstone line, and when we flick this lever, the redstone lamps will turn on. And we were able to accomplish this in the tight space, being able to redirect the redstone without the use of other components. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we'll move on to problem number two. Here we have problem number two. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this target block, and then I'm gonna put my items in this top chest right here. And I want you guys to guess whether the items are going to go into the red chest up here or the blue chest down here and why. Of course, I'll give you guys a moment to think about your answer and look at the circuit, and you can always pause the video if you need more time. Got your answer? All right. The correct answer is that the items went into the blue chest at the bottom. This one was a little bit tricky, so well done if you got it right, and if not, I'll explain why. You might have guessed that the target block, when I shot it, became powered and locked this hopper, in which case you would be correct, and that would mean that the items would flow into this chest. However, remember that the target block is only activated for a short period of time. So, by the time that we put the diamonds in this top chest, the target block was no longer activated, this hopper was no longer locked, and the items passed all the way down into the bottom. But if you guessed that the items would end up in the red chest because the target block would power the hopper, I'll give you partial credit because at least you're developing an intuition about how redstone works, and that's a good thing. Anyways, on to the last problem. All right, here we have the final problem, problem number three. We have a target block with an observer looking at it, and the observer is powering this dispenser full of snowballs. Next up, we have pretty much the exact same circuit, except this dispenser is full of fireworks. My question for you guys is, when I shoot this target block right here, how many fireworks will the top dispenser shoot off? This one might be a bit tricky, so feel free to pause the video and think about it if you like, and I'll give you a chance to consider the circuit. All right, got your answer. Let's go ahead and shoot this target block. If you said that the top dispenser was going to shoot four fireworks, you are correct and well done. If not, no worries, this is a learning process, and I'll describe to you why that is. Recall that an observer detects both the turning on and turning off of a target block, meaning that it will output two redstone signals. This means that this bottom dispenser will fire twice and hit this target block twice. But now, this target block is turning on again and off again for the first shot, and then on again and off again for the second shot, which is four total block updates that this observer is going to detect. And that's why we saw that this top dispenser shot off four fireworks. So to kind of sum that up, each time a target block is shot, an observer will give two outputs. So this first one was shot once, the observer gave two outputs, but then this target block was shot twice, so this observer gave four outputs. I hope that makes sense, and that is going to conclude our quiz segment. And it will also conclude today's episode on target blocks. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions related to target blocks, please do leave them in the comments, and I'd be more than happy to answer all of them. I'll be posting a few more episodes in the series in the coming weeks, so do look forward to that. And in the meantime, shine on, little stars. Shine on.